Scott, uh, uh, welcome on board again. And uh, uh, can you give our viewers um, this uh, nerve center progress? Uh, I'm quite impressed, but uh, give us the, the lowdown on that. Right. So to carry on from where we left off in previous videos, we're continuing to work on the trailing edge. So up to this point, these ribs here are original. The rest of the ribs are all new build. Um, from the aircraft, the donor aircraft, we didn't have a full set of ribs. So we've had to develop these ribs from, from scratch and we've um, made up a series of uh, hammer forms and then we form the parts around these forms, literally using a hammer. And this is a tried and true method going back to you know, the original uh, methods used uh, during wartime. Um, now we've made our um, forms out of wood, perhaps during the war they would have made them out of steel. Um, we only need to make a few parts, they had to make a thousand or more. So, um, and you know what, I mean, this is something that's fairly new to me and for us. And it's actually worked out quite well and I'm learning a lot. Um, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Now, just let me interject there is, uh, our, the folks that are uh, watching uh, this program, what it is, is if you have the blueprints of the Halifax bomber, that's a good beginning. But there are inconsistencies on blueprints from 1943-44. So if you actually have the part plus the blueprint, that's actually the best of all. And Scott, that's what you're finding, right? Absolutely. Because when they did the drawings, the drawings are done by a draftsman and he's using, say, a French curve to, to get a curve. So that's just on a drawing. It's the tooling in the shop that actually gives the part its shape, its real shape, right? Sure. So the drawing is a representation of a three-dimensional tool, right? Sure. So if we've got the part, then we can make the tooling based on the part as opposed to the drawing. Right. And like here, and in a simplistic manner, mm -hmm. if you see the trailing edge of the wing right. and these ribs that support that, mm -hmm. you see the curve there. Right. It's it's best to have the original part. Absolutely. Plus the blueprint. Yeah, it's and it, it can get so detailed as to if you're doing a, a you know, a, um, extremely detailed restoration, you can actually take the rivet holes and all of the vagaries of and the locations of those holes and copy them to within thousands of an inch, you know? So you can actually, because they're not perfect, right? When they when they were drilling these holes, it's a human. So they're unique to that aircraft. They're not exactly, you can't duplicate them from one, aircraft, one aircraft to another. So if you're, if you've got the original part, you can actually copy the location of each hole if you go into that extent. Now, we're not going to that extent, but um, having the part, as you say, with the drawings, is the best sure and um, we've got this uh, big crate of uh, parts that came from sweden right that we harvested from the site of uh, halifax hr871 mm -hmm. and some of those will be useful to the team perhaps not all of them yeah but the thing is is when you're doing your intensive work here at uh, the halifax rebuild shop uh you're you may need that and you will find it in that crate yeah i'm, I'm kind of jazzed. I mean, we're, we're deep into this part of the project, but I'm already thinking ahead and I'm looking forward to taking some of those parts and, and doing the flaps. And, uh, and while I've got your attention, do you remember if they were fabric covered or, or were they, were they uh, aluminum covered? Uh, the very uh, trailing edge, the very trailing edge of the uh, flight controls, whether it was movable rudders right. or ailerons or that um, a midpoint of the flaps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not the ribs here, the flaps that drew right, it down. Right. Uh, yes, they had fabric on them. Okay, good, good. Anyways, I'm, so I'm looking forward to, to taking those parts and getting the flaps started. Because sure. we don't have any flaps. Uh, there yep. were no flaps from the donor aircraft. Sure. And um, what I would like to tell the folks is Kelowna Flightcraft mm. in Kelowna, British Columbia, that rebuilds uh, fire bombers and cargo airplanes and everything, they've agreed to help us by building leading edge ribs right. for the wing. Hence, you're working on the rear part of the wing first because Kelowna Flightcraft 
can uh, replicate the nose ribs for us. Right. So that's going to be a great boon to us is to have that. Yeah, so we've sent them out a, an example nose rib and some drawings and some photographs, those production uh, era photographs that you provided. Yeah. So hopefully they've got enough to get that started. Um, and that's just like in wartime where you had multiple shops doing doing the work and then bringing everything together. Yes, we have a shadow factory yes. in Kelowna, British Columbia. Shadow factory. <laughs> exactly. And, that's, and if we're going to get this job done, that's really the only way we're going to be able to do it because one shop, you know, uh, it would take decades. Sure. Right? So we need to get multiple shops working at the same time. So folks, whenever any, any of you uh, uh, big aircraft industry sponsors that want a high profile, super interesting historic project, we need you as sponsors. So I'm throwing that in there just so that you're, you guys are paying attention. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, we, we developed these hammer forms. What happens is this is the, the blank piece of material cut roughly to shape. We put that in the form, we clamp it in the form, and then we beat on it um, with a hammer. It's great to take out your frustrations on this thing. <laughs> Um, and then we drill the holes, et cetera, et cetera, and it's all prepped for the next phase, which would be flaring. We, we, we take the uh, lightning holes and we flare them, make them look pretty. And this is an example of a finished part. Now, this is a different part. To, um, um, we don't have any uh, of this part available right now. But anyways, this is an example of what we're building. And uh, you did a great job riveting these together. Well done. Well yes, done. I was working with uh, team member Bill, and Bill? we did a bunch of riveting yesterday. Well done. Well done. So that's the, 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 the um, progression. Blank into the hammer form, formed into shape, finished, other little uh, strengthening um, components, whatnot, welded together. And then we've temporarily located the uh, ribs onto the rear spar here. And we're slowly building all the fitments and whatnot to attach the rib to the spar. Um, and then once we've got all that done, I've got around 75% of them done now. Once that's once they're we've got the locations established, we can start to build the um, long rounds, if you will, or the strengthening going in the in the um, um, from left to right and report to start. Sure. So, so Scott, uh, looking at all these components that we have here now. And these are in sequence assembled, and then they're going up onto this rear spar there. Yeah, and then we'll, they're joined from port to starboard with um, um, Z stiffeners, and then they'll be all, the whole thing will be all riveted together. And then once that's done, we'll start to reskin the trailing edge. And that's gonna be tricky. It's, um, um, you know, in wartime they had, uh, women who were flexible and young and for us to actually we in some cases we're gonna have to crawl up inside this thing to actually get to the back side of the rivet mm. because when we're we have to what's called buck the rivet so you've got the rivet gun and then you're bucking from the other side yeah so somebody has to be inside this thing and as we get further along it becomes an enclosed space so well it's going to be tricky to reach in and find the rivets and buck them from the inside. It's, it's, uh, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do it. I may actually take the whole assembly off, perhaps, for the last few uh, skins that go on. Mm -hmm. I haven't sorted that out yet, we'll figure it out. Uh, there are ac access hatches from beneath, mm -hmm. and so we may have to use those to finish up the assembly, or I build a jig, but well, we'll figure that out. So, uh, Scott, the, this area here is where the flaps of the Halifax come down right. and go up. And luckily, in Sweden, underwater, by digging in the sand, we found a whole bunch of uh, flap sections that can help us mm -hmm. with that flap uh, reconstruction. Absolutely, absolutely. No, for sure. As I, as I was saying earlier, looking forward to um, disassembling some of these parts and finding the best of the bunch and then copying them. Thankfully, the flap is a consistent uh, cross section from one end to the other. So once we've got one part or one, one rib um, established in terms of tooling, we can just replicate as many as we need. Well, I'm glad we found that storage uh, unit called Sweden mm -hmm. with flaps Absolutely. Uh, stored in the sand. That's it. And uh, we'll add that to the entire formula. Yeah, you know, I remember as a child, you'd read 
um, fly past magazine or airplane or whatever, and you'd see what is in essence a flattened uh, hurricane or, or uh, Spitfire, and you, you look at this mess of parts that they've recovered from where, wherever, and you go, how is that ever going to be an aircraft again now? Now here we are actually doing, this is very much a childhood dream come true for me. So here we are doing exactly um, you know, what, what so many other restorers have done over the years. And again, it's a real privilege to be able to work on this, it's great. So, and, now, and I'm not really trained on this, right? This is not my forte, but so I have to learn a whole new group of skills. And I'm, you know, um, as my father-in-law says, you know, every day you should be learning something new. And, and indeed that's what's happening. Yeah, well, bravo to you and Harry and Bill and the, the team. Uh, you're making great progress and what we'll do is uh, uh, we're gonna have a look on the computer at certain things that you and I have to talk about right. but I want to give you the briefing about the great progress that we've done out in Nanton on engines and propellers and other ancillaries that y you are not doing here with your aluminum